Next question. If Jesus has defeated the devil, why do even believer Christians come under the attack of the devil and sometimes suffer sickness, financial problems, family problems, accidents, all kinds of calamities. If Jesus has defeated the devil on the cross, why do even believer Christians go through trouble? Have you asked that question any time in your life? Many times we do have questions like that. Or maybe somebody has asked you that question and you need an answer. Let's look at it. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. If Jesus has de defeated the devil on the cross, why is the devil still able to attack Believer Christians. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. The devil is all out to wage a war against us. He's already on war and you and I are on a warfare against the enemy, the devil. The only enemy that we have in the world is the devil. And he is going around like a, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy. Thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and life abundantly. So we need to understand that the devil is not totally bound only after the thousand year rule of Jesus, after the second coming of Jesus and the thousand year rule and the final judgment, the devil and his demons will be finally bound in hell. Now the, now the devil was once an angel. Satan, Lucifer was once an angel in heaven, an archangel in heaven. But because of pride and he rebelled against God, he was thrown down from heaven and he brought with him one third of the angels. Those are the demons. Now, God has not removed the power that the angels had. That they had once as angels. God had not, has not yet removed their power. And that's why they are able to go and unleash evil in this world. And God has a time for that. To bind demon, bind the devil completely and uh, throw him into the lake of fire. That will happen. Certainly happen. That's the word of God will be fulfilled. But God has given the devil permission to go in this world. He, he, he sent the devil down to the earth. And the enemy, the devil, first right in the garden of Eden, began his evil work by deceiving Adam and Eve. And he continues to deceive people and to make people fall into sin. But when Jesus came... Jesus died on the cross and he has crushed the head of the devil on the cross. The devil is powerless against you. He cannot take complete authority and power over a believer or a child of God because of your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil has no authority, no power, no dominion over us. But he's still the prince of the world. The Bible says he's the prince of darkness. He's the ruler of this dark world. And, but God has a, a particular time when he will finally bind him. Now let me show you a few more verses to explain a little more. On, You see Paul and Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, are writing to the churches warning them to be careful and to resist the devil it does not mean that the devil will not attack us it is, does not mean that devil will not come against us the devil will certainly be against us and he will he's waging a war against us but the point is that you are already on the winning side hallelujah he has no authority he has no power and so when apostle paul writes he writes in second corinthians chapter 2 
and verse number 11 in verse number 11 he writes in order that satan might not outwit us um, we are not unaware of his schemes he, now actually this whole passage he is talking about uh, forgiving the sinner uh, in the body of christ after they have been um, you know dealt with and uh, after the punishment has been inflicted upon uh, someone who is deliberately presumptuously sinned now instead of you uh, you know continuously punishing a person he says forgive them and accept them and comfort them so that they will not be overwhelmed with excessive sorrow and so he says do not you know have hatred and bitterness against each other but forgive and he says forgive why because just as Christ has forgiven us you forgive one another so that Satan might not outwit us Satan might not have his way and bring division among us so forgive for we are not unaware of the devil's schemes he says, you need to be aware of the schemes of the devil. The devil is scheming to bring division. And so how do you overcome the devil which brings division by forgiveness and by love? And so he says, be aware of the devil's schemes. This is the scheme of the devil. This is how the devil is operating. Now the devil comes working and scheming through different people, through different circumstances. But we need to be careful that we are aware of the schemes of the devil. That's how the devil is trying to attack but the devil will not be able to prevail if we are aware of the schemes of the devil and if we are wise to operate against the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. We can overcome the devil in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, in prayer, by using the word of God and we can overcome the devil by, by wisdom, by godly wisdom, applying God-given wisdom and biblical way of life. That's how we overcome the devil. Hallelujah. So is the devil able to attack Christians? Yes, he can. Can he deceive people? Yes, he can. Can he put hindrances and roadblocks in people's lives? Yes, he can. He can. The devil is all out against us. His, his work is to somehow, you know, steal away and take away all that God has given to us. But... Jesus has given us abundant life. Hallelujah. Jesus has granted us a victory on the cross. But Jesus is with us. And we are on his side. We are on the winning side. And so we can certainly overpower and overcome the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes God permits the devil to attack us also. As Sometimes it, as he gave permission to Job, in fact, G, in fact, God told the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? He allowed that to come into Job's life. Look at the life of Peter. When uh, Jesus, before he went to the cross after the last supper, Satan comes and, and he wants to tempt Peter. He wants to deceive Peter and the disciples. And Jesus warns him ahead of time and he says, Peter, Peter, Satan has asked me to sift you tonight and you will deny me. But after you've recovered, after you've come back, strengthen the brothers, he said. So Satan comes and he wants to, you know, uh, he, he, God gives him permission sometimes. It does not mean that for everything that Satan does, he goes to God for permission. But sometimes to touch some people, to allow suffering in sometimes in some people's lives, God gives permission. It's, it's warranted under the, it's under the supervision of God. God knows what the devil is going to do. But you may say, then why does God allow it? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. Now we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he 
called he also justified those he justified he glorified what then shall we say in response to this verse 31 if god is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things now in everything god will turn everything for our good in all things god works for the good of those who love him sometimes god allows the devil to attack us but in all things god works everything for our good hallelujah hallelujah the devil is under the sovereign power and the control and the authority of god the devil cannot do anything without god's permission and beyond god's knowledge Amen. We need to be clear about that. The devil has no limitless power in the cruelty he can extend upon people. Let me repeat that. The devil does not have limitless power to extend cruelty upon people. He is limited under the power of God. God can restrain him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has restrained the devil several times. That's why we are alive today. That's why we are in good health today. That's why we are blessed and that's why who we are today. That's why we've not been deceived and fallen into the trap of the devil. Because God has restrained the devil. Hallelujah. God has not allowed the devil to have all authority and all power upon us. But at certain times, like Job, like Peter, he allows the devil sometimes but he is still a chained being he has no limitless power amen hallelujah god has given the devil some time in this world and for people to repent to come to him but there is a point of time when the devil will be finally bound eternally hallelujah and so we don't have to be afraid of the devil we should not live under the fear that maybe the devil might be attacking me Maybe this is the attack of the devil. Maybe God does not know about it. We do not know how much the devil can attack us. No, 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 no. no. The devil cannot do anything without the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. We are under the protection and the hand of God. But this is for our understanding. Even when God allows the devil to bring something against us, he will turn everything for our good. Hallelujah. It is to conform us to his will. It is to get his will done in our lives. He allows the devil. The Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. Why don't we read that scripture verse from Isaiah. You need to know these scripture verses even by heart. Verse 16 and 17. We read both. See, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into flame. Isaiah 54, 16 and 17. 54, 16 and 17. See, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to work havoc. But no weapon forged against you will prevail. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. The destroyer is given, allowed to work, but ultimately his weapons that, for, that is forged against you will not prevail. Hallelujah. Ultimately it will not prevail. That's who God is. That shows that God is a is our defender. God is our protector. God is on our side. Satan operates under God's permission on the earth. God is infinite and sovereign. He's not without chains. If Satan had all the freedom, he would do limitless havoc. That's why he's not been able to deceive everybody on the earth. He's not able to destroy everybody in this world. Have you thought of that? Even those people who do not know God. He has not been able to attack everybody and destroy everybody's life. 
even those unbelievers cannot be attacked and the whole world cannot be destroyed by the devil the devil is under god's control he has no power over us god fulfills his purpose even when sometimes attacks come let me show you another reason why sometimes there is attack from the devil second corinthians chapter number 12 quickly verse number 2 to 9 second corinthians chapter 12 verse 2 to 9 and sometimes people wonder the more spiritual experiences i have the more i begin to walk closely with the lord the more difficulties the more attacks of the devil the more disturbances hindrances from the devil why second corinthians 12 verse 2 onwards we we'll, yeah we'll first uh, look at the first part thank you auntie now this is apostle paul talking about himself but he talks in third person he says i know of a man who has been to the third heaven you know 14 years ago whether it was in the body out of the body i don't know you know and he was caught up to paradise was for he heard inexpressible things you know that man is not permitted to tell so which means paul is not recorded those things he heard the things that he saw he is not recorded here when the bible was 5 i will boast about a man like that but i will not boast about myself except about my weakness he says oh i like to boast about those revelations those spiritual experiences those times when i was caught up to the third heaven to the paradise where i heard inexpressible things i would like to boast about that but no but let me boast about my weakness verse 6 he says even if we, if i should boast it would not i would be still speaking the truth right even if he would say what all he saw where all he went what all god showed him he would still be speaking the truth even if he boasted it's not he's not lying but he stays i will not i will refrain let me not take pride in my experiences and he says verse 7 to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassingly great revelations there was given a, given me a thorn in my flesh a messenger of satan to torment me verse 7 to keep me from becoming conceited to become proud to become arrogant to to say i know it all to keep me from becoming conceited to you know for me not to have a big head about those things not to have spiritual pride to keep me from becoming conceited there was given to me a thorn in the flesh a messenger of satan to torment me and look at what he prays three times i pleaded with the lord verse 8 to take it away from me but he said to me god says in verse 9 he didn't take it away but he said my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness my grace is sufficient for you god said even when he allows the devil to touch us sometimes it's for a good purpose to keep us humble to keep us dependent on god to acknowledge god to say without you lord i can't exist i might have had great revelations great experiences visions i might do great ministry do signs and wonders but to keep me from becoming conceited there is a messenger of satan who sometimes permitted this is all again with god's permission he prayed three times pleaded with the lord to take it away a thorn in the flesh but he did not take it away god said my grace is sufficient for you god says i will give you the grace to go through that hallelujah he gives the grace to sustain to go on hallelujah now this is this is like tough meat to swallow this is only for the mature for the spiritually mature who will be able to grasp and understand and accept these things 
say god allowed this for paul now this is not how he suffered for the sake of the preaching of the gospel that is different where he went through shipwreck he went through nakedness he went through hunger he went through thirst he went through you know persecution he was beaten he was you know left almost to you know thought to be dead many times he went he was imprisoned that is different this is to keep him from being conceited about the surpassingly great revelations there was a thorn in the flesh permitted by god now some people try to explain what could be the thorn in the flesh i don't know some people say that might have been his wife i don't know if he was married <laughs> maybe a physical illness we don't know a thorn in my flesh so cheer up this morning that the apostle paul also went through what you go through but the devil does not have authority because the bible says in matthew chapter 28 hallelujah when jesus after he came up from the grave after he came through the cross and resurrected from the dead in matthew chapter 28 jesus says here oh praise god in verse number 17 and 18 jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me hallelujah all authority has been given to him he has authority over everything everything and mark 16 and verse 17 says that jesus has given us the authority hallelujah praise god whoever uh, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will drive out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well hallelujah he has given you the authority jesus gave his authority to the disciples and sent them out two by two to go and heal the sick and cast out demons acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says that jesus was filled with the holy ghost and power acts chapter 10 and verse number 38 the anointing is there upon our lives how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and power and went he, he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because god was with him you can you have been given the power in the name of jesus and just as jesus is anointed you and i are anointed by the holy spirit and we have the power and the authority over the devil to subdue the works of the devil hallelujah amen to cast out devils in his name to heal the sick and to set people free in the name of jesus you are anointed for that hallelujah you are anointed for that Jesus stood up in the temple and he read the scripture from Isaiah and he said the spirit of the sovereign lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor to set the captives free and to open blind eyes to and to liberate those who are imprisoned to set people from the powers of darkness we have been anointed that same anointing that came upon Jesus is upon you and me hallelujah but it's a different matter when god permits the devil sometimes to attack which he turns around for our good hallelujah to fulfill his purpose for his glory amen hallelujah he uses the devil for his glory to work good things in our lives hallelujah to keep us humble to keep us under his mighty hand but the devil is not under a limitless you know power he has no limitless power and limitless control he is under god's authority jesus has has all authority amen and we are in his hands and he has given us his authority to rebuke and to cast out devils to heal the sick and even raise the dead and even if a serpent may attack you it will not be able to harm you hallelujah hallelujah attacks may come but it will it cannot harm Hallelujah. That's why the apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 12 he writes we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Remember it's not boxing, it's not shooting. 
it's wrestling what is wrestling is an ongoing struggle against the devil wrestling wrestling you're not going you're not going to totally annihilate the devil that god will do ultimately you can finish the devil totally that god will do sometimes people bind the devil and say i destroy you no you you cannot destroy we don't have the power to destroy the devil only god has the power to destroy so we need to be also careful what we say when we pray but we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in the heavenly realms and we wrestle we fight against them and so he says pray continuously in the spirit hallelujah with all kinds of prayer so by prayer we overcome the works of the devil we wrestle and we overcome and we are victorious hallelujah we are more than conquerors through jesus christ hallelujah praise god hallelujah we are more than conquerors the devil has been defeated on the cross of calvary when jesus died and rose again death has been swallowed up the grave has been defeated hallelujah we will rise again hallelujah the devil cannot keep us down the devil cannot keep us dead praise god hallelujah jesus has won over the death and the grave and even if we die we will rise again praise god hallelujah the devil does not have the last say over your life the devil not does not has the complete you know decision over your life he cannot take decisions upon your life the decisions about your life and the things of the things concerning your life is in the hands of god hallelujah and he has given us the power and the authority to resist him overcome him overcome the evil one and to prevail hallelujah praise god shall we pray